some of the members of the MEK who wanted to leave were actually driven to the gates of my operational base and dropped off. Were there any issues between my units, my forces, and the MEK at Ashraf? Of course. But they were few and far between, and they were all resolved by simple discussions and understanding between each other. I spent well over a year working to receive definitive guidance as to a way ahead at Camp Ashraf. I brought many senior leaders of the coalition forces to Ashraf to give a generalization. They were all stunned that we were keeping them in such limbo. I left Iraq frustrated after that tour, and a year later when I returned, I saw that there had not been a change. There was still no definitive guidance. During that tour, I was charged with rapidly re rebuilding the Iraqi police, and simultaneously I was General Petraeus's subject matter expert on all police and security operations, including the security at Camp Ashraf. What is the resolution? What happens next? We continued to press. The over 3,400 persons at Camp Ashraf were given a promise of protection. Following a very thorough vetting process, and I know this for a fact because I'm the one that went and saw Madam Parzai and brought forth the promise. I feel so strongly about that promise that even now I would return to Ashraf and act as an intermediary between the MEK and the Iraqis who I know many of their senior leaders. And I feel so safe with the supposed terrorists that I would take my own daughter with me. She is a vocal supporter of human rights and rights for women. And you know she's excited to go. Because I fear that unless we have some type of intermediary, some type of initiative, rapidly, another tragedy will occur. We've seen members of this organization viciously attacked in the recent past. And in a few weeks, if this deadline is not postponed, we could see it again. Close Camp Ashraf. That sounds quite ominous to me, especially for the people there. When you hear others talk about the MEK and the people of Camp Ashraf, who they are, who they are not, ask, do they really have knowledge? Have they been to Ashraf? Do they know these people or anything on what's taking place within that 36 square kilometer facility? Or are they just reiterating a lot of rhetoric? I know the people of Camp Ashraf. I've been there. I've lived there. And they trusted us when we promised their safety and security way back in 2004. There are, a few places in the, there are a few places in the world where I won't let my guard down. Camp Ashraf is not one of those places. I fear that Camp Ashraf may become one of those places, though, very rapidly and violence could be wrought upon unarmed, I know they're unarmed, I was there when they gave their arms up, men and women, young and old. A cry must come out loud and clear that we will not stand for violence against the protected persons of Camp Ashraf. This deadline must be postponed. Evil thrives in darkness, so let's shed some light on Camp Ashraf. I tried to find a terrorist at Ashraf, and I could not. 
I tried to find torture at Camp Ashraf, and I could not. I tried to find people held against their will at Camp Ashraf. I could not. I only hope the world is listening. Thank you, Madam Rajavi, for this humbling yet daunting opportunity to address this august group. Thank you.